Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei found out the truth of his reincarnation and becomes Crimson Crescent Dragon Part 3. Before we start please go support Helix Asmodeus for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 17. Phoenix Arc. Part 2. The Pan, Kuo Airport. Issei, Erika and Ariana are back in Kuo. When Ark is accepted to go with Issei back to Japan, Ariana as Erika's loyal maid decided to with her. Unfortunately Lucretia couldn't come with him. Something about being an important figure in Italy and that she couldn't leave a for long time. So of course as a goodbye gift to say buck the living shit out of her and promised to visit her every week for a night full of passion and animal bucking. So yeah when Issei left Italy, Erika revealed that the Copper Black Cross gave Issei a couple million euro as thanks for defeating the heretic god and promised to never reveal his identity as the Red Dragon Emperor. Of course the millions of euro was converted into yen. So yeah Issei is now a millionaire. So that was a good thing that came with the job. Also when Issei came back from his small trip, Lucina almost immediately pounced on him and bucked him for six hours, not even caring that both Erika and Ariana were there matching the whole animal bucking and eventually participated. Issei had a feeling Lucina used some of her lust magic to make them easily accept and join the now foursome. Now we see our overpowered protagonist laying on the couch of his home shirtless with an empty pizza box next to him. Erika and Ariana were currently having a shopping trip in the main mall of Kuo to get some nice items. And Lucina was at school. Being a teacher and all means she has to give lessons to the horny boys in her class. Of course Lucina being Lucina decided to masturbate while the students were having a test and came on their tests. Of course she had an illusion so no one could detect that their teacher was pleasuring herself right in front of them. Issei knew Motohama and Mitsuda would have a heart attack seeing that. Perhaps he should have some fun later later. Ah I understand why my grandfather was addicted to pizza. Issei mused having eaten the whole pizza by himself. His thoughts were broken when he sensed a presence walking towards his door. Issei narrowed his eyes when he sensed the presence being indeed a devil. A pure-blooded devil at that. It wasn't the red-haired bitch, so it has to be the other pure-blooded devil in this town. Sona Citri or Sauna Shatori for her alias. The sister of the current devil king Leviathan. Issei was curious what the other devil had to say, and right on cue the doorbell ringed. Ring ring. Issei got up the couch and walked towards the door, forgetting that he was indeed shirtless. When he made if to the door he opened it and saw a young woman his age with black hair and violet colored eyes. She had short hair and a bob cut and wore glasses. She had a stern expression on her face, but that changed into shock when her eyes met the half-naked form of Issei Haidu who in short has a body that every male human wishes to achieve someday. Little did she know that she was caught staring and Issei had to snap his fingers to bright her out of her thoughts. Hello. Issei said while snapping his fingers in front of the black-haired devil who was finally brought back to the land of the consciousness. He face became a shade darker and coughed in her fist and regained her composer. Good morning to you Issei Haidu, I wish to speak with you about some small business manners. Sona said calmly and respectfully. She received word from the devil king Ajuka Beelzebub that Issei is currently not in a good terms with the devils, and Sona couldn't help wonder if that applies to herself and her peerage as well. Yeah good morning to you as well Sona Citri. Issei said calmly. He may not be fond of the devils, but he doesn't want to start unnecessary drama with the devils. I see that you are already aware of my being a devil. Am I safe to assume that you know that the student council is also completely made out of devils? Sona asks making Issei smirk a bit. Indeed I am aware. May I ask why you really want to meet me? Issei asks making the pure-blooded devil smile a bit. Like I just said, I came here for some small business matters. Sona replied making Issei chuckle. He had to admit this girl is interesting. Very well, do you wish to speak in my home or in the student council room? Issei asks making the devil think. If it isn't any trouble. I prefer that we can meet in the student council. I have some documents to give. Sona replied making Issei nod. You can go ahead. I will be there in five minutes. Don't worry I will make sure that no one sees me. Issei reassured and turned his back to the student council president. Very well, see you soon Issei Haidu. Sona said and turned around and started walking back to the school. Issei closed the door of his house and went to his bedroom to get a shirt and at least dressed a butt properly and not look like he lived in a cafe for half of his life. After two minutes Issei was done and called Lucina with the use of his telephone. Eventually the succubus took the phone and answered her master. Issei Sama? Lucina asked. Hello Lucina I hope I'm not interrupting something. Issei said making the succubus giggle. You are never interrupting something master. But why are you calling me? Lucina asks. Are you alone right now? Issei asks. Yes I am, it is now lunch break, so I am free as a bird. Are you planning to come over and have some fun with me? Lucina asks in a teasing tone of voice. Well I am coming over it is not for having a good time. We are going to meet the Citri Devils. So I will he there in a second. Issei said making the succubus bowed. 
Not fair, I have prepared something fun for you. Lucina pouted making Issei chuckle a bit perversely. We can do that later, but now we are going to talk business. Issei said a bit serious. Giving the hint to the succubus that he wasn't playing around for now at least. I understand master. I am ready for any command you give me. Lucina's tone changed into more respectable and submissive one making Issei grin a bit. But girl, see you soon. Issei hung up the phone and was about to teleport it before a thought came into his head. I should have Erika enroll at my school. She said that she wishes to be by my side at all times. Issei thought to himself and eventually agreed. Issei uses revelation to create a portal all the way to Lucina's location. Guo Academy, female restroom, when Issei exited the portal. Issei founded himself in the restrooms. Issei suddenly felt two very very soft pillows resting on his back and felt someone biting his ear. Issei became a bit red from embarrassment, but he quickly regained his composure and turned to the succubus who had a mischievous smirk on her face. Lucina. Issei said in a serious tone while making his crimson eyes shine brightly. The succubus couldn't help but to fall on her knees and started to breath heavily. Eh sorry master. I just wanted to surprise you. Lucina said while breathing heavily. Her body started to shiver at the dominating feeling coming from her master, making the horny succubus queen even more hornier. I will punish you later. But now we will meet the Citri Devils. I think they have some interesting info to tell us. Issei said used his senses to find out that no one was nearby them and exited the female restroom with Lucina behind him. After a couple of minutes of walking they finally arrived at the student council room. Issei took a deep breath and knocked several times on the door. Come in. The voice of none other than Sona Citri said from the other side of the door, making Issei open the door and let himself and Lucina inside. Sona didn't look surprised at the fact that Lucina was with Issei. Probably because she knew about the events that happened not too long ago. Sona was sitting by a well-built Victoria desk with two chairs opposite of her. There were other desks as well. Probably for the other student council members. There were also a lot of bookcases containing files and documents about the students. Welcome Issei Haidu and Queen of the Succubus Lucina, please take a seat. Sona suggested politely and pointed at the chairs opposite of him, with both taking the remaining seats. It is a pleasure to see you again Lady Citri. May I ask why you wishes to speak with my master? Lucina asked respectfully making the black-haired devil take out a document and hand the files inside over to Issei who quickly read the content inside of it and his eyes widen. Lucina who was reading it as well eyed widen as well in shock. Both looked at Sona with a deadly serious gaze and Issei's you is turned that into a dragon. What is the meaning of this devil? Issei coldly demanding making the citri devil gulp her saliva in slight fear. I just wishes to speak with you and talk about certain matters. Sona said and took a deep breath because she was playing an incredibly dangerous game that can end in her death and possibly a full-scale war. The Red God Slaying Dragon Emperor Chapter 18. Phoenix Arc. Part 3. Student Council Room, Kuo Academy. The Red God Slaying Dragon Emperor. Sona said calmly, the now serious Issei Haidu who was glaring are the Citri hairs. Issei and Lucina was shocked at what the black-haired devil just said. Issei knew she was clever, but to find out that she knew about Issei being the Red Dragon Emperor was something else. Did the red-haired bitch tell Sona about Issei being the Red Dragon Emperor his father erased their memories? It could be a possibility, but that wouldn't make sense. And the Citri Devil would have talked them about Issei being the Red Dragon Emperor when he was gone for two months. I can see that you both are clearly taken by surprise that I know about your secret. That is why I wishes to speak with you. Sona said calmly but inwardly started to get very very nervous. How could she not? Issei literally killed two gods a couple of days ago. With one being literally the god of victory. So Issei can without a doubt take her and her peerage on hell even her older sister Seraphil would lose against Issei. Before will you explain anything further Lady Citri? Are you the only one with this knowledge? Lucina suddenly asks making the Citri devil nod. Indeed, I discovered it just a days ago when I was at my home. So no one else knows about you being the Red Dragon Emperor except for myself. Sona revealed making Issei nod. He was glad that only Sona knew. A less of a headache to deal with. Very well, let's start first on how did you discover that I was the Red Dragon Emperor? Issei suggested or more accurately demanded with a calm voice, but it was his anger was still sensible for Sona. Very well. It started the day that Devil King Beelzebub came here to meet with you. After his visit, he told me that I should avoid making contact with you. Which got me curious about you. So I sensed my familiar to watch your house for the time being. And not long afterwards you were suddenly attacked by an unknown blonde female. Sona started to explain her story making Issei think about something. Hey partner. Remind me later to make a barrier around my house. If not I feel like I will be dealing with a lot more trouble later. Issei requested the Welsh dragon who Issei knew was awake and listening to the conversation. Sure thing partner. I am surprised thou, this girl is without a doubt someone special. 
Drake complimented making Issei agree with the Red Dragon Emperor. Not long after, Lucina came here and informed me that you Issei would be taking a trip for a short while. So I couldn't help and got curious and discovered that you along with two other girls with one being the girl that attacked you the day before and headed towards Italy, more specifically Rome. Sona continued to explain making Issei already mentally connect the dots and knew how she came to the conclusion that he was the Red Dragon Emperor. And had to admit she was very clever. And let me guess, you heard soon after on the news that the Red Dragon Emperor killed both two gods in back in Italy, or more specifically Rome. Am I wrong in my assumption? Issei sarcastically asked making the Citri Devil shake her head. Indeed after I heard the news I placed the pieces that together and came to the conclusion that you are the Red Dragon Emperor. Sona agreed. I got to give you credit. That you are one smart girl. But I hope you understand that I wishes to keep that information a secret at all cost until I decide to reveal myself. Issei said and made his eyes that of a dragon trying to give the message on how serious Issei is. I am well aware. That is why I wishes to speak with you. I wish to make a deal with you of some sorts. One favor I request from you in return to keep your secret. I have a feeling you don't wish to have to fight the whole underworld, so one famous is what I request from you. Sona revealed making Issei eyes narrow in suspicion. She was certainly bold to blackmail a guy who is capable of taking down a super devil in less than five minutes. And please enlighten me, what do you desire Sona Citri? Issei asks as a sarcastic tone of voice. Your former master Ria's Gremory has a problem that she can't solve on her own. My only request is that you help her and solve the issue. Sona requested politely. Issei had to hold himself from having his aura start to outburst out of his body. No way in Sparta's name he will help that red-haired spoiled bitch, but before Issei could deny Sona's request, Lucina made a mental connection with Issei. Issei-sama. I know you don't want to help the Gremory princess, but please listen to what Sona has to say. Please master I know you hate her, but at least listen to what this one has to say. Lucina requested and closed the mental connection making Issei think about it. He turned to Lucina who had a serious expression on her face, making Issei nod in acceptance. I see, so what problem does she has? Issei asks while suppressing his anger. Rhea's Gremory is currently in an arranged marriage contract with the third child of the Phoenix clan. It was set by Rhea's parents and the current head of the Phoenix clan. Rhea's has no wish to marry him, but the only possible way for an heir to escape an arranged marriage is to beat him in a raiding game. Sona explained making Issei raise an eyebrow in confusion. A raiding game? Issei asked not being familiar with the weird name. A raiding game is a competition between two high-ranking devils in their peerages. Rias isn't normally allowed to participate in a raiding game, but with the arranged marriage the possibility of a raiding game happening is high. So I wish that you can help her win the raiding game and free her from marriage contract. Issei was quiet after hearing her explanation, but something clicked in Issei, and his eyes widened. Question Sona, is it possible for Rias to have reincarnated me to have a stronger peerage, so she could defeat whoever she needs to fight in a raiding game? Issei asked in a deadly serious voice. Lucina understood what Issei meant and had to place her hand on his to make sure that he doesn't go berserk right now. She already left a message to Krom Kruich to stay nearby the area for reassurance if he would go berserk and latch out on the devils. Yes that was the reason she decided to recruit you into her peerage. When we discussed about possible members to request joining our peerage, you were her only choice because she sensed something strong within you. Sona answered a bit nervously. I see, Sona do you have knowledge about my reincarnation? Issei asks in an emotionless tone of voice, making the Citri Devil confused, but nonetheless answered. I don't know the details about your reincarnation. She just said that she asked you to join her peerage and that you agreed immediately without question. She said she used your perversion to make you agree. Sona answered making Issei eyes lit up in fury. Ow he needs to vent out his anger later. Perhaps asking his father to an all-out spar of bucking his harem into a coma. Or perhaps both. Issei couldn't speak after what she said, but luckily Lucina catch on and continued to speak for Issei. My apologies Lady Citri, but I have to tell you. What Rhea's Gremory has told you is a lie. She manipulated Issei and used her authority of the town she and you stay at as a way to forcefully get Issei into her peerage and lied to him and the true circumstances about his reincarnation. Lucina told the Citri hairs respectfully. Sona who was caught of guard at what the succubus queen said couldn't help but look at Issei and saw that he was barely able to suppress his anger. This made Sona think what the succubus told her right now is true. May I ask about the circumstances about your reincarnation Haidu-san? Sona asks respectfully along with a hint of sadness. She she let me die by my first date. The fallen angel Rainer. Issei revealed while trying to hold his anger in. Sona on the other hand was in an even bigger shock. Now it made sense, Rhea said that she would take care of the fallen angels who had infiltrated her and Rhea's territory. So Sona and her peerage didn't have to worry about them. She and Rias also knew that the fallen angels were sent to kill a sacred gear wielder. 
she must have used the moment the fallen angel killed Asay to forcefully reincarnate him into her peerage. Clever but a dirty method her family is heavily against. If they knew about this she would lose her status as heir of the Gremory clan without a doubt. Now Sona was stuck on what to do. She wants to help her childhood friend with this problem. But Rias deserved to get punished for her actions. She looked at Asay and knew that he without a doubt isn't going to help, but she didn't want her friend to suffer this fate. Ah oh, Satan, why is this so hard? Sona mentally thought to herself but eventually decided to help her childhood friend. Um Asay, I know what Rias has done is unacceptable. But I still wishes that you can solve the marriage contract. Sona said making Asay glare at her. And why do you think I will help that bitch Asay asks rudely. Sona ignored the rude comment and then adjusted her glasses. She had a slight idea in her mind, but it is a very risky one. I know you wish to have nothing to do with Rhea's Gremory and her household. But think about this, if you help her out of the marriage contract you can get a chance to meet her family. With that chance you can reveal everything she has done and trust me. The punishment she will get is going to traumatize her. I know her mother Venelana and she is one of the most sadistic devils out there today. So she will without a doubt suffer for her crimes. Sona tried to reason making Asay eyes lit up a tiny bit. The idea of Rhea's having to suffer by a sadist does sound appealing to him. So you want me to stop this marriage contract with this phoenix devil, and in return, I will have the chance to reveal her actions against me to her family? Issei asks in clarification. Indeed and don't forget that I will keep your identity a secret. Sona reminded making Issei think for a second. This is his chance to have revenge against the red-haired bitch, and why not play the hero with it? Issei stood up from his seat and looked at Sona with a evil smirk. Then we have a deal Sona Citri. Issei said and extended his hand making the black-haired devil look at him. She suddenly felt her cheeks warm up again, but quickly recovered and extended her arm as well and shook it. Usina noticed the small blush on Sona's cheeks as couldn't and grow an evil smirk of her own. Ow oh, this is gonna be fun. Lucina thought about some fun activities that are gonna happen sooner later. And it appears Sona is gonna join them. Yes we have Issei Haidu. Sona said with a smile. When did he became so attractive? Sona asked herself suddenly, but quickly shook at the thoughts and saw Issei walking backwards. I will see what I can do about the marriage contract Sona. I will contact you when I have the details. Issei said and gestured for Lucina to follow him. Before you go, can you please come back tomorrow? I wish to start a friendly relation between us. So things doesn't get awkward. Sona requested making Issei nod. Sure. It is better than dealing with this horny teacher. Issei said while teasing the succubus queen next to him making her pout. Hey you love having the idea of Lucina couldn't finish her sentence because Issei just teleported them out of the student council room. Sona was now left alone and had to think everything through. The original plan was to have Issei help Rias with her arranged marriage. It worked somewhat, but now she is doubting that she is really a friend after what she did to Issei like that. She needs to think her friends thoroughly from now on. Also the though of Issei keeps replaying in her mind. Don't tell me that I have started to develop feelings towards him. Sona mentally thought to herself in annoyance. Maybe I should ask him to play chess tomorrow. Sona said to herself and leaned back on her chair and slowly closed her eyes. Tomorrow. And with that the Citri Devil went to sleep. After a five minutes of sleeping a shadow on the wall started to expand and out of it came a someone. Yufufufu this shall be fun. Chapter 18.5. Bonus Scenes. Heaven, a handsome man with long blonde hair and gentle green eyes, was sitting on a very well-crafted golden desk, seemingly doing some paperwork. This is Michael the secret head of the angels. Michael became the head of the angels after Elohim's demise, along with the four great devil kings. Michael was humming a happy tune to himself while filling up some paperwork. But that stopped when the door of his office opened and another person came in. The person that came into the room was a woman of divine beauty. She had long curly blonde hair and the same innocent green-colored eyes as her brother. This is Gabriel, the strongest and most beautiful angel in heaven. But the normal cheerful and optimistic Gabriel was now replaced with a very worried and serious one. The angel hasn't been so serious since the Great War. Michael saw the expression on his sister face and addresses it immediately. Hello Gabriel, you look like something is bothering you. Michael noted making the female angel nod and walk towards the desk of her brother and placed a file. Read this brother, this matter needs to be addressed at the utmost importance. Gabriel said seriously making Michael nod and took the file and opened it and started to read the context of it. The time came from an organization called the Copper Black Cross. An organization Michael is familiar with. Dear Lord Michael and the angels in heaven. We the Copper Black Cross have a very important matter to inform you about. Yesterday the infamous Red Dragon Emperor has defeated and killed two heretic gods in the lands of Italy. The gods were identified as the Mediterranean King of the Gods Melkert and the Persian God of Victory Veritragna. We have sought out the Red Dragon Emperor and has asked his aid in stopping Veritragna from causing calamity in our lands. 
At this moment we are repairing the damage caused by the legendary battle between the dragon and the gods. If you all in heaven are concerned that the Red Dragon Emperor is part of our organization. Fear not, the Red Dragon Emperor helped us for only this time, and we don't have any other connection with him. We appreciate it if you could relay this information to the factions of the underworld. Have a blessing day. The Copper Black Cross, Michael was shell shock. To hear that the Red Dragon Emperor has defeated and nonetheless killed two gods is a lot to take in. What is more surprising is the identity of the two gods. One being the king of the Mediterranean gods and the other one being the god of victory. The same god that fought against Indra and tied with him. Not to mention that means that this Red Dragon Emperor is the first one to effectively kill a god. Not one of the 13 original Longina Sacred Gears has ever done that before. Michael placed the document on his desk and slowly looked towards the direction of his sister. What are we going to do now bother? Gabriel asked the head of the angels who was thinking what step they should take. If the Red Dragon Emperor was capable of killing two upper tier gods, that means he has the strength to take down the heavens, and perhaps he even has allies. I think we should look out for the Red Dragon Emperor and when we ever meet him. We shall try to get him on his or hers good. Without a doubt this generation Red Dragon Emperor is the strongest ever and the first Sacred Gear user to kill a god. Michael explained making Gabriel nod. Should we inform the fallen angels and the devil about this news? The letter requested that it would be appreciated. Gabriel asked making Michael nod. Yes we don't want any misunderstandings with the fallen angels and devils. We have been trying to form a peace treaty for some time now, but we need a spark to enlighten it. Michael answered making Gabriel nod. I see, very well then. I will send the message to them immediately. Gabriel said with her usual happy persona and teleported out of Michael's office. Michael looked back at the letter in front of the him. Whoever you are Red Dragon Emperor, are you friend or foe? Michael asked to himself but eventually decided to drop it and resume his paperwork. Underworld, Lilith. In the capital of the Underworld was an important meeting about to take place. The four great Satans were about to gather on request from Seraphol Leviathan, the head of foreign affairs, to discuss about a very important matter. She received the news about the events that took place in Italy and the actions of the Red Dragon Emperor and let just say she was shocked and called for the four great Satans to meet and discuss about it. Now the four great Satans were gathered in the capital of the underworld called Lilith to discuss about the matter at hand. In the massive room where the meeting is taking place were all the current Satans present and as well Grafia Lucifuge the queen of the current Lucifer, Serzich's Lucifer. And Serzich's and Grafia aren't married in this fanfiction. Serzich's wife is just a random high-ranking devil and they have a child called Milikas. Now all Satans and Grafia are present and waited for Seraphol to relay the information she just received. May I ask why you summoned a Seraphol? Serzich's asks politely to his fellow Satan. This news is very important Serzich's, I just received a letter from heaven stating that the Red Dragon Emperor has defeated and killed two heretic gods in Italy. Not just any gods, the king of the Mediterranean gods Melkert and the Persian god of victory Virithragna. They haven't given us much more, but they assume that the Red Dragon Emperor responsible for the incident must be one of the strongest if not the strongest in past, present and future. Seraphol revealed and took a deep breath and waited for the response of the three other Satans. Serzich's was in total shock. He was aware of the power of the two heretic gods. Well he may be able to best one of them. Both at the same time, even he would have a very difficult time. Ajuka was also surprised. To hear a sacred gear user be able to take down two high-ranking gods like that makes the Red Dragon Emperor a very powerful and dangerous individual. He needs to be careful with this one. He already was easily defeated by the last descendant of Sparta, Issei Haidu. Albium the last Satan, the one who took the title Asmodeus, has already fallen asleep. Graphia was also surprised at the news and couldn't help be curious about this mysterious person. To be able to defeat and kill two high-ranking gods was very very impressive. She just hoped that she won't ever needs to fave someone like that. Serzich's was first to speak after a minute of silence and light snores of the current Asmodeus. So what now? Serzich's asks not really knowing what to do. I am confused as well, this is the first we hear about the Red Dragon Emperor doing something like killing two gods. Seraphil answered Serzich's. I don't think we can do something really. We have no information about the Red Dragon Emperor. The best thing we can do is to wait and maybe launch an investigation. Ajuka suggested. You are right. We should wait and hope nothing bad will happen that affects the underworld. Serzich's agreed with his friend. Very well then. Then this meeting is officially over. Seraphol declared, and the Devil Kings went on what they were doing with Falbium still haven't woken up. Underworld, Grigori, the leader of the Fallen Angels Azazel was currently in his office reading the current letter in his hands. His eyes lit up in interest. After reading the content of the letter and has called a special someone to meet in his office. The current Red Dragon has slain two high-ranking gods huh? Very interesting. Azazel said to himself. 
But his thoughts were disrupted when the doors of his office opened and came in was a young woman with unmatching beauty. She had snow white hair with silver tips and azure blue colored eyes. She was currently wearing a green V cut t shirt that revealed her massive breast. She wore a leather jacket and some matching jeans and a chain. She had a bad girl aura while having an aura of elegance and royalty. This is Valerie Lucifer or Val for short. Anne? Valerie is half dragon, she gave the human part of her to Albion to gain more power. Something that Virgil would do. She was the descendant of Lucifer and the white dragon emperor or empress in her case. Sup Azazel for what did you call me here? Valerie said in a carefree manner. Yo Val, I have some very interesting news. Azazel replied making the white dragon empress curious. What is it about? Valerie asks making Azazel grin. It is about your rival, the red dragon emperor. He has officially made his debut in the supernatural world. Azazel answered making the white dragon empress's eyes widen in excitement. Ah oh really, what have you heard of him? Valerie asks with obvious excitement in her voice. She was curious when her destined rival was about to reveal himself. She has been craving for a good fight. Dear Red. Azazel said and handed the letter, and Valerie took it. After reading the content in it her eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. But before anybody could say anything two white wings with blue energy feathers came out of Valerie's back and an ancient voice spoke for everybody to hear. Is this letter really true Azazel? The voice of none other than the white dragon emperor himself and the dragon of supremacy Albion asked the perverted leader of the fallen angels. Well I don't know if it is true yet, Michael and Gabriel aren't known to he liars. So it is safe to assume that what is written inside of this letter is indeed true. Azazel replied making Albion think. I see, this is very interesting. Albion commented making Valerie nod. Does any of your previous host has killed a god before Albion? Valerie asked her partner. No, the closest who came to defeating a god was the grandson of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. But he wasn't actually killed a god yet. In fact none of the Long Ina Sacred Gear users has ever confirmed killed a god before. Making the current host of Drake the first. Albion revealed making Valerie nod. A shame she wanted to be the first Long Ina Sacred Gear user to ever have killed a god. I see, that only means that my rival is a worthy opponent. Valerie commented making Azazel sigh. This girl has an insane amount of lust for battling. Yeah yeah battle maniac I get it you want a good fight. But seeing that your fated rival already has slain two high ranking gods means that he is currently above your level in power. Azazel said making Valerie think. That only means that I have to become stronger. Valerie said like it was the easiest thing in the world. Easier said than done. But that is why I called you here. Azazel said making Valerie nod. Very well, see you later perverted crow. Valerie said and teleported away leaving Azazel to himself. Azazel looked back at the letter and sighed. This generation of red and white dragons are sure interesting. Azazel said and took out a purple orb from his pocket. Very interesting. Chapter 19. Phoenix Arc. Part 4. Issei's home. Issei was happily sleeping with both Erika and Lucina in his bed. They enjoyed a full night of beast bucking and was happily enjoyed the heavenly sensation of sleep right now. But all good things must come to an end. Because the cursed alarm clock started to go off. Ring ring ring. Issei slowly opened his eyes when his hearing sensed the cursed alarm clock going off. On my great grandfather's name I hope whoever invented the alarm clock is suffering in hell. Issei said annoyed to himself and fired a black bolt of lighting at the alarm clock, causing it to malfunction. Issei tried to sit up from his bed but was stopped when a hand came from the bed and grabbed his soft hawk. Issei looks behind him and saw none other than Lucina wide awake with a lustful expression on her face. Erica on the other hand was still sleeping like a rock. Probably because she isn't used for someone to buck the living soul out of her. Good morning Master Lucina said in a seductive voice that can make every male human hum just with that voice. Good morning Lucy Chan, mind taking your hand of my hick? Issei asks, but the succubus queen didn't comply and sat up still with his hick in her hands and slowly started to stroke it. I don't think that it a good idea master. Because your god slaying sword needs to be relief. Lucina said with a slutty smirk, causing Issei's hawk to go fully erect. Very well, have it your way. Issei gave in into the charm of the succubus. One hour later, after having an hour of handcore hex that can notify the whole town of what they are doing. Issei was walking towards the direction of his school. Erika said that she will look around the city some more. And Ariana is going to buy some extra things needed in the house. Issei was walking right through the gates of the school and sensed that everyone was staring at him. Word probably got out that the former pervert was now the hottest student on the market right now and everyone was talking about him. Issei made it to his class and went straight to his desk and waited for class to start. To his enjoyment Lucina just entered the classroom and walked seductively to her desk and turned to the class. Good morning class. Lucina greeted causing all the boys to jump in excitement. Good morning to you too Miss Lucina the class yelled out in unison. Like a platoon of soldiers answering back to the general or something like that. 
Nice to see the class in such high spirit. Lucina said with her charming smile. Issei swore that his former perverted friends were about to bust a nut because of this. Issei couldn't help and get a naughty idea for later involving these two. Today class we have a transfer student from Italy, please welcome her with open arms. Lucina announced. The whole class erupted into talking with Issei not being bothered to listen and just lay his head on his desk. Just a transfer student from Italy. Nothing special. Wait a minute, Issei jerked up his head from his desk and saw the door of his class open, and his jaw dropped when a familiar blonde-haired knight with dark blue eyes came in the class with her usual elegance and grace. Erica Blandelli entered the classroom and stood next to Lucina, who was smiling brightly while sharing glances at Issei who kept a stoic face. Hello everyone, Bongiorno. I am Erica Blandelli and I am a transfer student from Italy. But before you all ask questions I am an announcement to make. Erica introduced herself politely. She suddenly raised her hand and pointed at Issei. Before you ask I am already taken by none other than Issei Haidu, she boldly declared making the whole class and Issei shocked. The buck? Issei yelled in his mind. Drake couldn't help but laugh at the drama happening in front of him. What? The whole class yelled out making the Red Dragon Emperor smash his head on his desk, almost breaking it. No way the pervert got a girlfriend Mireyama said out loud with her friend Caddis also being in pure shock. Wow Issei is very lucky very lucky. The pervert with glasses said softly so no one could hear her. But Issei was able to hear her and glanced at her and saw that she was staring at his lower region, making Issei slightly uncomfortable. But no way why do you have all the girls Issei? Motohama yelled out with tears in his eyes with Mitsuda nodding as well. The former jockey was about to grab Issei's shirt in anger but was stopped when Erika suddenly appeared in front of him with a smile on her face. I would appreciate it that you refrain from touching my boyfriend. Erika said while smiling. This caused the jockey to suddenly nod sit back on his chair like nothing has happened. Issei knew Erika used some magic to make the pervert sit down without any complaints. But he didn't mind it, less of a headache to deal with. Well thank you for handling the situation Erika, you can sit behind Issei who is right next to you. Lucina said making the blonde knight nod and take the seat behind Issei. Lucina then start the lesson for today making the red dragon emperor sigh. Why does it has to turn out like this? The world will never now. Time skip lunch, after four hours of boring classes while having some teasing of Lucina. The bell rang signaling that it was lunch. Issei and Erika slowly stood up from their desks and packed their bags and was about to head out, but before they could leave. The door of his class opened revealing a very long black-haired girl with glasses. She was Tsubaki Shinra, the vice president of the student council. Excuse me Miss Lucina, can I ask that both Issei Haidu and Erika Blandelli come with me to the student council room? Tsubaki asked politely making the teacher nod. I hope they haven't done anything naughty. Lucina said with a teasing tone making Issei silently growl at the succubus for playing around like that. Nothing of the sorts miss. Now if we may, we will take our leave. Tsubaki said while walking out of the classroom with Issei and Erika behind her. When they exited the classroom Erika immediately latched onto Issei's arm and looked at him with affection. So how did you like my surprise? Erika asks with a teasing smirk. Issei looked back at the smirking knight and couldn't help but smirk in return. I enjoyed it very much. Issei replied and gave a quick kiss on the knight's lips, making Erika place her arms around Issei's neck and deepen the kiss. But before they could go further they were brought out of their makeout session when Tsubaki coughed into her fist. Please refrain from kissing in the school you two, it is against school rules. Tsubaki lectured with a stoic face, but the blush on her cheeks betrayed her. Yeah yeah my bad sorry. Issei apologized like he didn't make out with Erika just now. Let's get going shall we? Issei asked making the vice president of the student council nod. Eventually the trio made it to the student council room. Tsubaki knocked on the door to announce their presence and waited for a response. Enter. The voice of none other than Sona Sitri spoke from the other side of the door. Tsubaki opened the door and allowed Issei and Erika to enter the student council room. Issei immediately felt the presence of multiple devils in the room. Issei quickly took a look at them and none of them stood out. The only one that remotely drew his interest was the only boy in the group. Issei could tell that the boy had the aura of a dragon and not any dragon. An evil dragon at that. Issei could tell because he is one himself. But the one coming from the boy is way weaker than his and not even comparable to that of his father's. Issei looked back at Sona Sitri, who was sitting by her desk with her usual stoic expression on her face. Glad to see you again Issei-kun. Sona greeted politely. Yeah the same here, I assume you know who Erika is. Issei said and pointed towards the blonde knight who was standing next to him. Ah yes Erika Blandelli, the transfer student all the way from Italy. Sona noted and stood up from her desk and walked over to the knight and extended her hand. A pleasure to meet you, I am Sona Sitri, the heiress of the Sitri clan. Sona greeted the knight politely. The pleasure is all mine Sona. Erika greeted back elegantly and returned the handshake. 
May I ask why you asked for us here? Issei asked while ignoring the jealous stare coming from the only other boy in the room. Simple, I came here to introduce you two to my peerage. Sona answered while gesturing to her peerage. I see. Issei muttered and turned to the peerage. Hi I am Issei Haidu, a pleasure to meet you all. Issei greeted casually. Issei quickly noted that some girls started blushing making Issei inwardly smirk at his natural charm. So it is my turn. I am Erika Blandelli, the Diavolo Rosso. I am also Issei's personal knight. Erika stated proudly. Issei could sense the jealousy getting stronger from the blonde-haired boy. Then it is my peerage turn to introduce themselves. Sona said and gestured towards her peerage making Tsubaki step forwards. I am Tsubaki Shinra Sona's queen. A pleasure to meet you too. Tsubaki introduced herself. Next was a blue-haired girl and blue eyes with a tomboyish appearance. My name is Tsubasa Yura Sona's rook. It is a pleasure to meet you as well. Tsubasa said respectfully. My name is Momo Hanakai Sona's bishop. A pleasure Issei Kun and Erika San. The white-haired girl said making a say nod. Ryaku Saka Sona's bishop. Hello. A brown-haired girl greeted. Amo Maguri Sona's knight. Nice to meet you too. Another brown-haired girl greeted. My name is Ruruko Nomura Sona's pawn. The last girl introduced herself. Lastly it was the jealous boy with blonde hair. He took a step forwards and gave a smug look. The name is Saji Genshiru, pawn of Sona Citri. How many pieces did you take up? The boy named Saji said in an arrogant manner making Issei and Erika slightly confused and Sona pissed. Saji Sona called out, but the pawn didn't obey her call. I heard a lot about you pervert. So let's make one thing clear. I can take you on, I took four pawn pieces bro. Saji continued with his so-called achievements. Issei had to stop himself from bursting out of laughter. Issei could defeat this wannabe punk in less than a second, and if he remembers correctly before his powers were unsealed. He was worth eight pawn pieces. So he was even more superior than him before his powers were unsealed. My Satan this boy is a joke. I don't have any evil pieces. Issei said with an uncaring manner. Ah you must be so weak and powerless that you aren't even worthy of becoming a devil Saji said making the Erika and Sona's eyes widen. If there is something Issei hate is being called weak and powerless. Especially coming from weaker people that look down at him. Saji Sona yelled at him louder, but the pawn didn't listen again making the Citrieris even more furious. The worst thing is she invited Issei to forge a better relationship with him not making it worse. Erika secretly prepared a rapier to strike down the pawn who dares to disrespect her master. Issei looked at the pawn with his crimson-colored eyes, and a black and red aura started to leak from his body. The aura quickly increased its power to the point it already sended the whole Citri peerage, except for Sona and Tsubaki to their knees. Erika was powerful enough to withstand the powerful aura, but she couldn't help but blush at the dominating feeling from Issei. The same was for all the females in the room who were affected by Issei's aura and probably needed an underwear change after this was over. Issei slowly walked over to the down pawn and looked at him with disgust. You boast about being powerful while well, you don't even are capable of withstanding 2% of my power. Issei said disappointingly. What Issei said was true. This was only 2% of his aura in his base form. If he used the boosted gear Saji and the other weaker members of the student council would have died by the pressure. Issei looked over to the rest of the peerage and sighed. He stopped releasing his aura allowing the peerage to stand on their knees. Saji on the other hand was already unconscious. He looked at Sona. Is this all or are we done here? Issei asks in a bored manner making the Citrieris nod. Yes yeah, sorry about that Issei Kun. You can go for today. But don't forget to contact me when you have more information about that. Sona said after she recollected herself. She looked at Issei with a blush. Very well, we will take our leave then. Issei said and walked towards the door with Erika behind him. Issei opened the door. But before he left he turned to Sona. Keep that pawn of yours in line or there won't be a next time for him. Issei threatens while making his eyes shine a beautiful crimson and left the room, leaving the Citri peerage alone. W what is he Sona? Tsubaki asked making Sona sigh. The being we should never get on his bad side. Sona simply answered and looked towards her unconscious pawn. Wake Saji up, he needs to get punished for his actions. Sona ordered making her servants nod. Yes president the peerage yelled out. Issei's home, end of the day. After a whole day of boring classes Issei went home and relaxed for the day. Of course relaxation meant for Issei having a couple of hours bucking the succubus queen, his knight and the maid on his bed like a beast, and now they are sleeping for the rest of the day. Now Issei was on his couch eating a whole pizza by himself and watching some Netflix on his TV. But all good things came to an end. When a crimson red magic circle appeared on his floor, making Issei's eyes widen and growl at the person teleporting inside of his house. Soon after the light died down. The red-haired bitch teleported inside of his house and looked straight at the red dragon emperor. Issei I need you to do something for me. 
Ria's hurriedly said making Ase confused a bit, but he was glaring at her at the same time. Ria's you have 5 seconds to teleport your bitch ass out of mine house before I burn you to ashes. Ase threatened. You need to take mine virginity. Ria said ignoring Ase's threat and started to undress herself. You think I would listen to wait what did you say Ase asked in shock. I need you to take my virginity. Ria's repeated and was now fully naked. Chapter 20. Phoenix Arc. Part 5. Ase's living room, I need you to take my virginity. Ria's repeated and stood now completely naked in front of Issei. Issei was now in a state of shock, confusion and anger. Issei had the urge to incinerate the red-haired bitch in front of him and end her existence. He took a deep breath glared at Ria's. And why would you assume that I will oblige to your wishes Gremory? I am not your servant anymore and you don't have any power over me. Now I say it again, leave right now before I drown you in the depths of the Chrisman purgatory. Issei said calmly while releasing his aura. Ria's immediately shivered at the aura coming from Issei, and her legs started to shake. Please Issei do you not mind my body attractive? Ria's asks while leaning over to show her breasts some more. Issei eyes started to glow a deadly crimson red. Issei stood up and roughly grabbed Ria's by her throat and lifted her from her feet. Listen here bitch you don't have any right to ask anything of me after the shit you pulled on me, you are lucky that I haven't killed you and your peerage by now, Issei yelled out while squeezing her neck tighter, causing the red-haired bitch to look up at Issei with fear. Tears started to drip from her eyes all the way on her cheeks. I am as sorry Ria's apologized with tears in her eyes. She never expected that Issei possessed such amount of strength and could look so intimidating. You don't have the right to apologize. Honestly I wonder why I fell for you in the first place. Issei said and continued to choke her harder. Ria's face started to get purple and her vision started to get blurry. But before Issei could kill Ria's. A white magic circle appeared next to them, and out of it came a very beautiful silver-haired maid with matching silver-colored eyes. She wore a maid outfit that suited her well, and she had a stoic expression on her face. But stoic changed into shock when she saw Issei choking Ria's. Lady Ria's the maid yelled out and fired an ice blast towards Issei, causing him to let go of Ria's and block the attack. But Issei underestimated the force of the attack, causing him to send crashing through the wall. Crash. Ria's fell on the floor while trying to regain her breath. She looked up and saw the silver-haired maid who came to her rescue. Ray dot dot Fia. Ria's barely got out of her mouth and watched the silver-haired maid take her clothes from floor and helped her get dressed. Lady Ria's what has happened? The now named Grafia asked the Grimory princess who regained her breath. Ria's looked towards the direction of where Issei was sent flying and an idea came into her mind. She started to fake cry and latch on the silver-haired maid. Grafia thank you so much for saving me Ria's yelled out while sobbing onto the maid. Everything will be alright Lady Ria's, now tell me what happened. Grafia said while helping Ria's with her clothes. At the same time Issei came back into the house. He saw Ria's with a silver-haired maid whose name was apparently Grafia. Issei looked over at the maid and sensed that she was a powerful devil. But what he heard next was something that made his blood boil. H he tried to grape me Ria's yelled out while pointing towards Issei. This made Issei's and Grafia's eyes widen. Issei's anger started to rise to an scary level, while the dragon inside of him started to growl in anger at the lies of the crimson-haired devil. Grafia's eyes widened and looked towards the direction of Issei and glared at him. Grafia stood up and let go of Ria's and turned towards Issei. Grafia's eyes shined a beautiful silver while glaring at the boy who was glaring at Ria's with his aura leaking. Can you explain your actions? The maid asked coldly to Issei who turned his glare towards the maid and wasn't even bothered by her glare. What actions? The bullshit coming from that crimson-haired whore or that I almost killed her. Issei asks with a cocky grin. Is it true that you attempted to grape Ria's Gremory? The maid asked why Lai started to appear around her. Issei of course wasn't faced and just walked over to her direction until he stood one meter from the maid. And what if I did? What are you gonna do about it? Issei asks making the maid glare harder and she quickly froze Issei's legs. They're violating the heiress of the Gremory clan and the younger sister of Lucifer. You must pay for your actions with your life. Grafia stated, but another voice made itself known. I would appreciate if you stop it right there Grafia Chan. The voice spoke out, and all people looked over to the direction of the voice and saw none other than Lucina leaning against the wall with only her lingerie on. Grafia's and Rhea's eyes widened when seeing the queen of the hex demons. How long have you been standing there Lucina? Grafia asked the succubus who shrugged her shoulders. Way longer than you Grafia Chan. Lucina answered and looked at the now shocked Rhea's who had in face of horror. That means that she was here when Ria's arrived here and requested Issei to take her virginity and that she lied to Grafia about Issei's actions. Lucina looked back at the silver-haired maid and back again to the crimson-haired bitch. Can you explain your actions? Lucina asks while releasing her aura causing the Gremory heiress to flinch. I, I don't know what you mean, he tried to grape me what else do you want? 
Rias yelled out making the succubus queen and Issei inwardly facip him at the Gremory princess's stupidity. I see then can you explain this? Lucina sat and extended her hand, and a magic circle appeared on the TV behind them. The magic circle shined brightly and moments later, and the TV turned on revealing Issei and Rias before Grafi arrived. I need you to take my virginity. Rias repeated and stood now completely naked in front of Issei. Grafia's eyes widened and paid closer attention to the screen. Well Rias had a face of horror. Issei was now in a state of shock, confusion and anger. He had the urge to incinerate the red-haired bitch in front of him and end her existence. He took a deep breath glared at Rias. And why would you assume that I will oblige to your wishes Gremory? I am not your servant anymore and you don't have any power over me. Now I say it again, leave right now before I drown you in the depths of the Chrisman purgatory. Issei said calmly while releasing his aura. Rias immediately shivered at the aura coming from Issei, and her legs started to shake. Please Issei do you not mind my body attractive? Rias asks while leaning over to show her breasts some more. Issei eyes started to glow a deadly crimson red. Issei stood up and roughly grabbed Rias by her throat and lifted her from her feet. Listen here bitch you don't have any right to ask anything of me after the shit you pulled on me, you are lucky that I haven't killed you and your peerage by now, Issei yelled out while squeezing her neck tighter, causing the red-haired bitch to look up at Issei with fear. Tears started to drip from her eyes all the way on her cheeks. I am as sorry Rias apologized with tears in her eyes. She never expected that Issei possessed such amount of strength. You don't have the right to apologize. Honestly I wonder why I fell for you in the first place. Issei said and continued to choke her harder. Rias' face started to get purple, and her vision started to get blurry. But before Issei could kill Rias. A white magic circle appeared next to them, and out of it came a very beautiful silver-haired maid with matching silver-colored eyes. She wore a maid outfit that suited her well, and she had a stoic expression on her face. But stoic changed into shock when she saw Issei choking Rias. And with that the screen turned off leaving the room in total silence. Issei whose legs were still frozen was grateful and impressed that Lucina had recorded the events that just happened. After a minute of intense silence the ice around Issei's legs disappeared allowing Issei to move his legs again. Issei looked over to the red-haired devil and saw that she was now carrying a face of total horror and despair. My apologies for the misunderstanding. We shall leave you too. Grafia said and not waiting for an response walked over to Ria's and was about to teleport away, but Lucina said something before they teleported away. Say hello to disappointing and bed zetches for me. Lucina said with a grin and saw the two teleport away. Issei looked over to the succubus and sighed. Thanks Lucy Chan, if it wasn't for you I would have started a fight and possibly started a war. Issei thanked the succubus who smiled sweetly at her master. It wasn't much of a problem. Lucina said and walked over to Issei and placed her head on his chest. But I wish to be awarded for my actions, Master Lucina said seductively making Issei grow a bulge in his pants. Very well you earned your reward. Issei said and threw Lucina on the couch and started again a beast-like session. Not caring that there was a massive hole in the wall and that everybody outside could hear them bucking like animals. The next day, Issei was walking toward school with Erica behind him. They were having a peaceful conversation about what happened yesterday. Erica swore that the red-haired bitch tries to do something like that again, she would order her lion to devour her. Issei chuckled at the night and continued their walk until they reached the gates of the school. When they reached the gates. They saw none other than Sona Citri standing there along with her queen Tsubaki. Good morning Sona and Tsubaki. Issei greeted. Well he way not like devils, he didn't mind those two. Good morning to you too Issei and Erika. Sona greeted back and looked at Issei. Issei there are some very important people that wishes to see you in a cult research club. Please head over there, I already have excused you for your classes today. Sona requested making Issei sigh. He expected that something like this would happen. He turned to Erika who looked at him worriedly. Issei gave a soft smile and rubbed her back. You can go ahead, I can handle it. Issei told the knight who wanted to rebuttal, but Issei's smile told her that everything was fine. Very well, but don't hesitate to call me if something happens. Erika said and gave a quick kiss on Issei's lips and headed off towards the school building. Issei chuckled and looked over at Sona. Are you coming with me? Or am I going alone? Issei asks making the Citrieris adjust her glasses. We were requested to come as well. Now let's get going. Sona said and started to walk off with Tsubaki behind her. Issei sighed and started go follow the pair towards the occult research club. The walk was kept in silence until they reached the occult research club. Tsubaki opened the doors allowing Issei and Sona in. Both walked towards the main room of the building, and when they did Sona knocked on the door and waited for a response. Enter. An unknown male voice spoke from the other side of the door, making the black-haired devil open the doors, and Issei saw two new devils he didn't recognize, along with Grafia. One of the new devils was a handsome man with crimson red hair that barely reached his shoulders. He had blue-greenish eyes and had a leader-like aura around him. 
He wore a white suit that looked to be designed for someone of noble status. The man was sitting on Rhea's chair. The second person was a small young girl with black hair tied into two ponytail and dark violet eyes. She wore a dark green business suit and had a serious expression on her face. She was sitting on one of the couches. Grafia was standing behind the crimson-haired man, the same way Akeno stands behind Rhea's. And lastly not to his surprise both Rhea's and Akeno were standing behind the couches trying to avoid eye contact with him. Hello you must be a say hi do correct? The crimson-haired man asked making a say nod. Yes I am, who is asking? Issei asks in an uncaring manner. My apologies for dragging you out of your classes. But we needed to address certain matters as fast as possible. And for who I am. I am the current Devil King Lucifer, Serzich's Lucifer. You already have met my queen yesterday, so I don't think I need to introduce her to you, but for the other person sitting on the couch. She is Seraphol Leviathan, the current Devil King Leviathan, and the head of foreign affairs. Serzich has introduced himself and Seraphol who nodded and kept her gaze on Issei. A pleasure to meet you Issei Kun. Seraphol greeted making Issei nod. Very well, so what do you two wishes to talk about? Issei asks making Serzich's sigh. About what happened yesterday. Serzich's replied making Issei grin. Then you are in for a long day. Chapter 21. Phoenix Arc. Part 6. The Cult Research Club. So where do we begin? Issei asked the Devil King. What exactly happened last night? Serzich's answered making Issei roll his eyes. Did your slave queen no tell you about what happened? I am not in the mood to repeat something you already know. Issei said annoyed at the super devil. The younger devils looked surprised by Issei's response, but wisely kept their mouth shut. Serzich's sighed at Issei's response. Yes my queen has told me about the events that took place yesterday at your home. The video footage that the queen of the succubus has provided Grafia helped us clear some understandings. Serzich's answered making Issei raise an eyebrow. But misunderstands you mean you sister asking me to take her virginity and later lied to Grafia that I tried to grape her. Issei clarified making the super devil nod. Yes those misunderstandings. But it also came to mine interest that you almost killed her if it wasn't for my queen intervening. Can you explain that? Serzich's asked while glaring at Issei. Rias who was now watching had a smug look on her face. It appears that Gremory Whore used your attempted murder on her to get herself out of her problems. Drag noted annoyed. If we was alive he would have incinerated the bitch already. Yeah it appears so. But I have trump card up my sleeve. Issei mentally replied back to the Welsh dragon with a grin. Bow oh, please, you are lucky that I haven't already killed her her peerage the moment I came back here. Not to mention didn't the current Beelzebub ordered the devils around here to leave me alone. But it appears they didn't listen to his orders and so suffered the consequences. Issei replied making Serzich's and Seraphil's eyes widen. I see I forgot that Ajuka had mentioned that you rather not bother yourself with devil business. Serzich's said while now glaring towards Rhea's making Rhea's smug expression crumble into a face of horror. Now what we are done with the so-called accusations against me. How about we speak about what Rias did yesterday? Issei suggested making Serzich's nod. Very well then. Rias, Sona. You two can leave along with your queen. We will speak about Rias Gremory's punishment later when the rest of the family is present. Serzich's ordered making both Devil Eris nod and leave the occult research club. Issei gave Rias one more smug look and his plan for revenge was just about to begin. Now Issei found it himself with the older devils in the room. Serzich's and Seraphil were carefully watching Issei. Anticipating on how to approach the situation without making it worse. While Grafia on the other hand kept her stoic expression on her beautiful face. So are we going to keep playing this staring game or can I leave? Issei asks having enough of the constant staring and wanted to deal with this as fast as possible. Seraphil was first to answer him. We wishes to know what happened that caused all of this to happen. Rias told Ajuka that you were her former pawn and that you disappeared for two months and came back from nowhere, along with the Queen of the Succubus. Seraphil explained making a say nod. I can explain it right now, but that would be boring. So how about this, I know that Rias has a marriage contract with the third child of the Phoenix clan. I also know that she doesn't want that to happen. So if I can her get out of her marriage contract and free her from her marriage. Issei started to explain making all three devils very confused. Issei clearly showed a great disdain for Rias and her peerage. But now he wants to help her out of her marriage. This was very suspicious. You are offering your help. What do you gain out of this? Seraphil asked suspiciously making Issei grin. Simple, I want to have a meeting with the head of the Grimory clan and the former great king. Zekram Bale. Issei answered the cute Satan who was still suspicious of Issei's offer. And what do you wish to speak about with my family? Serzich's asked making Issei shrug. I would hate to spoil the surprise. Issei replied back to the Lucifer who was thinking on what to do next. He wishes to get his sister out of her marriage contract with Riser Phoenix. 
But he knew Issei was doing it not for the sake of saving his sister. But does he takes the risk? Or refuse his offer? Time was running short, and this was his only possible way to get her out of the marriage contract. Issei at this point had walked towards the direction of the Lucifer and was standing right in front of him. Issei's red eyes met his blue-greenish ones, and a fire could be seen between the two. So what is your answer Lucifer? Issei asks with a grin making Serzich's bite his tounge. He knew he had to take it for his sister's sake. We have a deal. Serzich's answered making both Seraphal and Grafia shocked. Master think clearly about this. You don't know what he is planning. Grafia warned her master making Serzich's sigh. This is the only way to get Rias out of her marriage contract. Serzich's answered back. Issei looked at the two and grinned like a maniac. I see, so how about we talk about specifics? Issei suggested making the Lucifer nod. For you to save Rias from her marriage contract need to defeat Riser Phoenix the third child of the Phoenix clan. We can't let you participate in the raiding game because the rules state that only devils can participate, but you can crash into the wedding and challenge Riser Phoenix for a duel. I will come and tell the audience that I have prepared this to spark more flair or something like that. Serzichas explained making Issei nod. Sound good to me. Issei said and turned around and was about to exit the room. I will send Grafia to your home to pick you up for the marriage. Goodbye for now, Issei Haidu. Serzichas said while nodding making Issei nod. Bye bye Issei Kun. Seraphal said while waving like a child. Yeah, bye. And with that Issei exited the room and the occult research club. Seraphal turned to Serzichas and gave a confused look. Hey Zeches, I know that you want to save your sister and all, but you do realize that boy is without a doubt incredibly powerful right? Seraphal asks making the Devil King nod. Yes I heard. He took a magical attack from Grafia to the face and wasn't faced at all. He wasn't scared to fight her either. Without a doubt this Issei is more than capable of defeated Riser Phoenix. Serzichas answered his fellow Satan back making Seraphal hum. You he is powerful alright. He is also a very good looking guy. Seraphal admitted honesty. You weren't wrong. Grafia whispered to herself. She had a good look of Issei yesterday, and let just say that he was the most attractive man she have seen in centuries. Yeah yeah now let's get ready for Rhea's meeting riser later. Serzicha said casually making Seraphal snicker. Imagine your mother finding out about what your sister has done. Do you think she would live? Seraphal asks making the crimson Satan's face pale. Let just hope that she doesn't, my mother is one to the most sadistic devils alive along with Esdith. If she discovers what Rhea's has done. She would be buried alive and tortured for decades. Serzicha said with a pale face remembering the sadistic tendencies of his mother, who is one of the few devils that can scare the Crimson Satan like a little girl. Haha I want to see that. Seraphal said and looked over to Grafia, and her face softened. Any news about her? Seraphal asks making the maid shake her head. As Deeth refuses to join the anti-Satan faction because of her endless lust for battle. She greatly dislikes the idea of peace and wishes to battle against the fallen angels in heaven. Grafia answered back making Seraphal sigh. Sorry to bring it up. She apologized. Don't apologize. Now let's get going, we still have some work to be done. Grafia said making both Satans nod. Thirteen days later, thirteen days has passed, and Issei was still waiting for the invitation to crash the wedding party. After the meeting Issei got a message from Sona that said that Riser and Rias would have a rating gave in ten days. This resulted in Rias still losing against Riser. After the raiding game Issei got another message from Sona, and it said that the wedding took place in three days. So now Issei was waiting for Grafia to come and gave him what he needs to crash the party. Issei also went on plenty of dates with both Lucina and Erika. They had an amazing time and enjoyed spending time with Issei like this. Also Issei started to grow close with a student council. Mostly Sona, Tsubaki, Momo and Tsubasa. Saji of course continued to be jealous, but Issei couldn't give a lesser damn. Issei also defeated Sona in a game of chess. He wasn't the greatest player, but he was able to catch Sona by surprise and take down her king. For a strange reason Sona was in total disbelief, but Issei didn't know why, and they refused to give the reason why until the whole riser mess has been dealt with. So yeah now Issei was laying on his sofa shirtless with a box of pizza next to him. Before he did so he had a nice foursome with his harem members. So yeah now we see our overpowered protagonist laying on the couch with a box of pizza next to him while watching some shows on TV while being shirtless. Am Drag are you sure that the wedding is today? Issei mentally asked the dragon inside of him. It is today partner, perhaps they found it another solution to break of the marriage. Drag suggested making Issei think. Maybe or maybe not. Issei responded back. Right on cue a white magic circle appeared on the ground and out of the it came none other than Grafia Lucifuge. Grafia looked over at Issei, and her eyes widened when she saw his naked chest. She quickly removed those thoughts and looked at Issei in the eyes. 
Good evening Issei Sama, I am here to give you the marriage circle to get you in the Phoenix castle where the wedding is taking place. It will begin in three hours. Grafia greeted and handed over a pamphlet with a magic circle on it. Very well. Issei said and ate the last slice of pizza. Then I see you by the wedding party Issei Sama. Grafia said and was about to teleport. Later sweetie. Issei said grinning and saw the silver-haired maid blush right before she teleported away. Issei stood up from the couch and stretched his arms and legs. But when he was about done he sensed another presence entering his house. Issei was alerted but soon recognized the presence and grinned. Sup dad. Issei said out loud. Out of the shadows came no other than Krom Kruich, who was had a smirk on his face. I heard that you are challenging a phoenix. Krom noted making Issei shrug his shoulders. Yeah, just to have my revenge against the red-haired bitch. Issei said casually making Krom chuckle. Are you planning to reveal your heritage? Krom asked making Issei raise an eyebrow. Nah I don't think I will, if things turn out for the worst I will reveal my demon heritage. Issei answered making Krom nod. Very well then, make it at least entertaining for me. Krom said and vanished in the shadows, leaving Issei alone. Ah let's get this party started Issei yelled out to no one. Underworld, Phoenix territory, and a massive castle in the underworld was a massive party going on. Many noble devils and elders came to the wedding to celebrate the union between the two devil clans. The four great satans and Zekrom Bale was there as well. Of course Zekrom was invited by Serzich's because of the favok Issei asked of him. On an big table was the peerage of Riser Phoenix who were boasting about their king and such. Well the other peerage were forced to hear them ramble about themselves. Zona of Tsubaki were also present at the wedding party. They knew Issei was on their way to barge in and break the marriage between Riaz and Riser. After an hour of partying Riser came on stage in a formal suit with the same retarded face that he always carries and started to ramble about the current status of the underworld and just introduced Riaz to the crowd. If anybody has any objections to this marriage, please come forwards and voice your objection. An elder devil spoke out and was about to do the last parts to officially announce the marriage between Riaz and Riser. Riser had an victorious grin on his face. No one could take away this glorious moment from him it so he thought. Objection and voice said out loud making the crowd of devils look around to seek for the voice, but to their surprise, they sensed a powerful attack coming their way. Run and devil yelled but it was too late. Boom, a powerful black lighting bolt was launched at the doors of the wedding, causing the doors to fly off. Everybody was in shock that someone barged into the wedding like this, and Riser was furious at someone ruining his perfect wedding. The dares to intervene Riser's wedding Riser yelled out in the third person. He was soon answered when he heard footsteps coming towards his direction. When the smoke cleared they saw a very handsome young man with white hair and crimson red colored eyes standing by the door. Man. Issei is wearing Virgil's attire IDMC5 with a bit more red. Issei Haidu, at your service. Issei answered with a grin. Chapter 22. Phoenix Arc. Part 7. Underworld Phoenix Castle. Everyone was in shock at what just happened in front of them. This mysterious handsome for the ladies young man came here crashing through the door and took down several of the guards with it and just stands there like he owns the place. Riser on the other hand is furious. How dare this lowly being crash his wedding. Guard sees him he ordered the guards making them rub up to Issei who wasn't even bothered by them and just flexed his muscles. But before anything could happen a magic circle appeared and out of it came Serzich's in his satan attire. Stop at once Riser Serzich's ordered the guards making them lower their weapons but still were cautious. This is something I have prepared for you Riser. Your victory over my little sister was hardly impressive. So I decided to add some flair into. Serzich's explained making Riser and the audience shocked. But I have one fair and square Riser tried to argue, but that was short-lived. Fair? You have participated in numerous raiding games before, well this was Ria's first one, not to mention you had the advantage when it came to numbers. So I think you can call this victory hardly fair. Serzich's answered back. It is the final outcome that counts lord. Riser again tried to argue. Maybe in the past. But we are long over with these old times. Serzich's said making Riser shut up. Serzich's turned him attention to Issei and gave a small smile. I have invited Issei over here to provide us some entertainment. So now what do you wish if you would win this duel? Serzich's asked making Issei inwardly impressed. He is a good negotiator, he had to admit that. Wait Lucifer Sama, you can't give a reward to someone who isn't a devil. An elder said making Issei sigh. These old bags really need to get out of those old traditions. I have personally invited Issei over here. So it is only natural for me to award him if he wins this duel. Serzich's explained making the elder quiet. Now what do you desire if you win? Serzich's asks again making Issei grin. Simple I want that Ria's Gremory's marriage contract with the fried chicken over here being abolished. Issei simply said making everyone again shocked and Riser furious. Issei. Ria said with hope, but Issei ignored it and just grinned at Riser. 
you can't do that this marriage is the wishes of the elders, Riser yelled making a say roll his eyes, but before someone could say something more another voice spoke out from the other side. It doesn't matter if it is the wishes from the elders or not. The law says that if one of the participants is giving an reward of his or hers choosing. He or she could request anything they desire. At least if it is within the power of the devil kings. And abolishing a marriage contract between two households wouldn't be any collateral damage little brother. The voice spoke out making all people look at the direction of the voice, and they saw none other than an stunning blonde hair lady with light blue eyes. She had her hair in two drills and wore a stunning dress. She also had a pair of breasts that easily was bigger than Rhea's and even Akeno. Big sister Riser yelled out making the older sister of Riser scoff. So she is the fried chicken older sister huh? I must admit she looks fine as buck. Issei mentally praised the blonde devil. You were always so confident in your abilities, but I was never impressed with you poor strategies. Now accept the first or drop your pride as a member of the Phoenix household. The woman declared making Riser eyes widen and turned to Serzich's. If it is a fight you want. You can get it, Riser declared making Issei grin. Then I am game. Issei simply responded making Serzich's nod and look towards the direction of the older Phoenix. Claire Phoenix would you do the honors and be the referee for this duel? Serzich's asked the now named Claire making her nod. Indeed I will my lord. Claire said with an elegant bow. Very well then. Let's this duel begin. And with that both Issei and Riser were teleported away. Dimensional gap, Issei and Riser were teleported to an artificial created arena. The same arena he fought the super devil Ajuka Beelzebub in. The other devils were watching through some magic recordings, and this battle was broadcasted to the whole world. Now we see Issei and Riser standing opposite of each other. Issei wasn't nervous at all. He defeated two gods and could fight his father for more than five minutes, when both of them goes full power. So a fried chicken is not gonna be a problem. Attention fighters. This is an official match between the third son of the Phoenix family, Riser Phoenix, and the mysterious fighter Issei Haidu. The voice of none other than Claire came from somewhere. The battle will commence after I give the signal. If Issei Haidu wins then the marriage contract between Riser Phoenix and Rhea's Gremory will be abolished. Claire continued. The winner is decided when a contestant is defeated, Conceder is killed. With all the rules out of the way let the battle begin, Claire declared making Issei grin. It was finally showtime. Riser immediately released his wings and flew in the air. When he high above the ground. He created two big balls of fire and fired them at Issei. Issei grinned seeing the attack coming towards him and simply raised his hands in a welcoming manner. Is he planning to take Riser's attack straight on? Riser thought making him grin at the human stupidity. When the attack finally reached Issei is simply took it straight on. Who on the area around Issei was covered in smoke while Issei's body was nowhere to be seen. The ha head appears this lowly human thought that he could stand a chance against the flames of the Phoenix clan, Riser boasted pridefully. Hey grilled chicken you should make sure that your enemy is actually defeated before boasting about your so-called victory, well you haven't put a dent in me yet. A voice came from the fire and out of it came none other than Issei Haidu who looked completely fine and unscratched, but how did you survive Riser's flames? Riser yelled out making Issei grin. I have no reason to tell you. Issei stated and vanished in thin air. Where did he go? Riser asks while looking around. He suddenly felt a sharp pain in his gut and looked down and saw an katana pierce through his back. You disappointed me Riser. Issei said and pulled the sword from Riser's gut and gave an axe kick straight to Riser's skull, sending him straight down crashing into the grounds and making an crater. Issei landed on in the rook monument and looked down at Riser who he could see climbing out of the crater while his wounds were healing. So this is the so-called immortality of the Phoenix clan. Well impressive, I have seen better. Issei admitted and gave the downed phoenix a cocky smirk. Riser apparently heard Issei's cocky remark of his family's power and started to fume with anger. You dare to underestimate the power of the mighty phoenix clan. Riser yelled out making Issei roll his eyes. I already did, so what are you gonna do fried chicken? Issei mocked making Riser even more furious. Riser flew up to Issei with his fists covered with phoenix fire. Issei chuckled at the poor attempt and disummoned his sword and simply catch the fists of Riser and look him dead in the eyes. I in the flames of the phoenix riser yelled out. Issei had enough of his blabbing and pulled riser's fists and gave a mighty headbutt straight to his skull, sending him again to the ground. Issei hadn't enough and started to cover his own fists with a strange crimson fire. Issei jumped from the monument onto the ground and started to walk towards the downed riser and when he was close to him. He grabbed him by the arm and lifted him up and fired an enhanced punch straight to the face, breaking almost all of his teeth and sent him flying across the arena and crash into the wall. The Iperum, the audience was in shock that a human was able to manhandle Riser like it was nothing. Claire Phoenix who was in the VIP area looked on with interest. Is big brother going to be alright? A young girl's voice asked making Claire look to her right and saw what could be described a younger version of her. 
Blair sighed and looked at her younger sister and decided to give her honest opinion. Our brother will without a doubt fail to win this fight ravel. Claire admitted making the youngest phoenix shocked. But how? Big brother is fighting a human. Raven asks making Claire sigh again. Simple, the human isn't fighting Riser seriously at all. He is just toying with his food until Riser can't fight anymore or when he is done toying with him. Claire answered her younger sister making Ravel even more shocked. How do you know that the human isn't fighting Riser seriously, big sister? Ravel asks making Claire silent for a second, but she nonetheless answered. Battle intuition I suppose. Claire answered and took a red crystal with green symbols on it. The crystal started to shine a bit when she took it out and Claire's eyes narrowed at the reaction of the crystal. So it is him. He is the red dragon. Claire looked back at the screen that displayed the battle of Riser and Issei. So he is the red god slaying dragon emperor. Claire said to herself and looked back at the screen and continued watching the battle. Battle arena, Issei had to wait at 20 seconds for Riser to recover from his attack and when he did. He looked even more furious. Stop messing around you bastard Riser yelled out making Issei a bit confused. What are you talking about? Issei asks in bored tone. He honestly was tempted to use revelation and send him to the crimson purgatory, make him feel true despair, but he wanted to have a bit more fun. This marriage is important the future of the devils a human scum like you doesn't belong here Riser declared while yelling making quiet for a second. I don't belong here. This is my great grandfather's home. This fried chicken is started to really piss me off Issei said in white to himself and decided to reveal a part of him that will probably catch the whole underworld, heavens and other mythologies by surprise. Are you planning to reveal your demonic heritage to the world? Drake asks his host making Issei mentally nod. Yeah I had enough of this devil mana bee. I will show him what it means to have true power Issei mentally declared making the dragon inside of him grin. Make your ancestors proud partner. Drake said and cut the mental connection to his host, making Issei grin even more. I was planning to. Issei replied back and started to walk towards the still fuming riser. Hey fried chicken, before we end this can you answer me a couple of questions? Issei asks making riser and the audience confused. Well start a conversation in the middle of a battle. What do you want? Riser asks irritated. Just a history question. Who was the ruler of the underworld before the four original satans? Issei asks making Riser and the audience confused. The ruler of the underworld before the four original satans? Riser asks, but for a strange reason he felt obligated to answer it. Mundus. Riser answered making Issei grin. Ow oh, this is gonna be fun. The Ipirum, why suddenly asks questions in the middle of the match. A random elder asks another who was equally as confused. But in the large pool of elders and green-haired devil with blue-colored eyes was thinking very hard right now. He had a slight idea what Issei is planning. Don't tell me Issei is gonna reveal that part of him. Ajuka Beelzebub thought go himself. He of course knew about Issei's demonic heritage when he sensed a familiar aura similar centuries ago. Ajuka why is the human asking Riser Phoenix questions related to history of the devils? A female voice asks the super devil making the green haired devil look to his side and saw a beautiful young woman with long blonde hair with blue tips and deep blue eyes. She wore an elegant dress that revealed a lot of cleavage. But you will find out soon enough Laisha. Let's continue to watch the battle. Ajuka answered his niece who nodded and looked back at the battle. Arena, Mundus. Riser answered making Issei grin. Correct, another question. Who is the devil who single-handedly defeated Mundus and sealed the human realm from the underworld? Issei asks again making Riser answer it again. Sparta, the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. Riser answered again making Issei grin even more. Correct again. So you do have a brain under that immense amount of ego of yours. Issei commented but soon asked another question. Riser, what would you do if you would face a descendant of Sparta? Issei asks the phoenix who was now confused. The audience however was in shock. It didn't take a genius to realize that Issei was implying and they couldn't believe it. Is Issei a descendant of Sparta? What are you trying to say? Riser demanded an answer making Issei chuckle. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Issei Sparta Hayadu. The grandson of the legendary demon hunter Dante and the great grandson of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta. Issei declared while in dark crimson red and black aura started to come out of Issei. The Ipirum, the whole audience was in shock. Issei declared that he is a descendant of Sparta. The legendary Dark Knight Sparta who alone conquered the whole underworld and sealed the human realm from the underworld. Most of the audience didn't believe Issei's statement, but the older devils who have met the sons of Sparta were now confused if the statement was true or not. In the dark room was none other than Krom Kruich, watching the battle between his son and the grilled chicken. Krom was enjoying the one-man beatdown his son was giving the bird while eating a banana, so you decided to reveal that part of yourself, huh? Krom asks to himself, but it appeared another voice decided to answer for him. 
Indeed, it appears that my beloved disciple has decided to not hide from the supernatural world any longer. An hexy voice answered the strongest evil dragon, making the dragon turn his head to the direction of the voice, to only see a figure hiding in the shadows. I didn't expect to see you here. Or more specifically my world. Krom commented making the figure giggle. I am known to be unpredictable Krom Kruch. The figure replied making the evil dragon chuckle. Issei will be surprised to see his favorite teacher in his world. Krom said while finishing his banana. The figures kept quiet, but in smile could have been heard from the shadowy figure. That is good to hear. The figure responded, but the figures had something else in mind. I am coming my beloved disciple. The figure thawed and disappeared through the shadows. Krom chuckled and looked back at the screen. Hope you can handle that god slayer son. She is a handful that it for certain. Krom said to himself and continued watching the battle. Arena, liar Sparta and all of his descendants died long ago no way you could be one of them. Riser yelled furiously at Issei who still had a dark crimson red and black aura around him. Then I will have to prove it to you. Issei said and closed him eyes. The aura around him started to spread and the small rocks on the floor started to levitate from the intense pressure building up. The pressure started to become so strong that the walls started to collapse on themselves, along with the chess pieces monuments. Riser on the other hand had trouble standing still and could only watch in horror when the massive pressure started to force him on his knees. But when it felt like it was over an explosion of energy happened sending Riser flying. Boom, the explosion was too much for the arena to handle and caused it to be completely destroyed. When the smoke cleared from the arena and figure could be seen levitating in the air. The figure is one could describe a true devil. The devil watched the now scared Riser straight in the face and spoke in a deep demonic voice, making the phoenix and audience shake in fear from the sheer power coming from the voice of the devil. This is the true power of Sparta. Chapter 23. Phoenix Arc. Part 8. VIP Room. Everyone in the VIP Room was shocked to their core. They never believed they would see a descendant of Sparta again. All of the underworld knew about Sparta. He the devil that alone took down the demon King Mundus and sealed the human realm from the underworld. Not to mention his sons Dante and Virgil were even stronger than Sparta was. No one could say something. Everyone was in shock by the revelations, in awe by Issei's raw power or still in disbelief what they just witnessed. Ajuka who was in the VIP room had an uncharacteristic grin on his face. Well he never knew Sparta himself. He did have a conversation with the youngest twin of Sparta, Dante. He could see the clear resembles between Issei and Dante. The same cocky manner, the same light-hearted battle nature, hell their true devil form looked the same. He just hoped that Issei was willing to have negotiation, or else the devil faction will have to fight a powerhouse that could potentially destroy the world. Laisha who was also in shock and in awe of what was happening in front of her, couldn't help but be curious with the whole situation. She had studied a lot about the three legendary Spartas and how powerful they were. She looked over to her cousin and saw the uncharacterist grin on his face and slightly nudged his shoulder, making him look at her, and his face turned back to his normal stoic expression. Ajuka, why were you grinning like that? Laisha asks making Ajuka shrug his shoulders. It just has been a while since I have met a descendant of Sparta. Ajuka replied making Laisha nod. Are you planning to start negotiation with him? She asks already knowing the answer. Yes I will, I want to make sure that he doesn't potentially becomes an enemy. Ajuka answered making Laisha nod again. Then allow me to come with you. Laisha offered making Ajuka look at his cousin. Are you certain of this decision Laisha? You never know what type of person this is a Sparta is. Ajuka asks making Laisha nod. I am very certain, I am very curious to know this is a Sparta. Laisha answered making Ajuka sigh and nod. Very well then. I will let you know when the time comes. Ajuka said making Laisha smile gracefully. Thank you. She simply replied back and started to watch the battle. The Phoenix family was now in panic. They thought that their son would fight a weak human. But boy they were wrong, and now Riser was facing a devil who was feared in all of the underworld. Sparta. Ravel Phoenix asks to his older sister. Ravel didn't know much about this legendary devil, only that he was able to defeat the previous king of the Mundus and separate the human world from the underworld. Sparta, yes the legendary Dark Knight. Claire answered her younger sister back. Claire on the other hand was in even a bigger shock. She knew Issei is the Red Dragon Emperor and a God Slayer, but now he is also the descendant of Sparta. What else could he also be? The son of the strongest evil dragon. Sheesh if there was a miracle in this world it must be Issei's whole existence. I need to talk with him to make sure that he and the Phoenix clan don't become enemies in the future. Claire thought to herself and watched the battle where Riser much to her and her family's embarrassment has already met his pants. By Satan why does he needs to be my brother? Claire asks herself and watched her brother shaking in fear while his pants were soaking wet. Sona and Tsubaki who were in watching the battle as well, along with Seraphol Leviathan, were all very shocked to have witnessed what just happened. 
And what more Sona knew about Issei's true identity of the Red Dragon Emperor. She was glad that she started to make a good relationship with him to prevent any misunderstanding. Not to mention Issei is her fiancé, how lucky she was to be become the future wife of the last descendant of Sparta. But first she needs to relay the information to Issei without him blowing a casket. Sona knew this is gonna be an annoying day. But on the good side she could potentially have a husband that she has no problem being with. Rias who was standing by her family was in total disbelief. Why? Because she never would imagine the same boy she saved a couple of months ago would be in reality the descendant of the legendary devil Sparta. She knew she bucked up so badly, she only can imagine if her mother discovered what she had done to Issei. She would experience a true help by her mother's sadistic persona. The believe he is a descendant of Sparta. Ziotica said out loud making his wife Fenelana agree with him. We haven't heard about a descendant of Sparta since Nero, and that was 300 years ago. Venelana said out loud. Could it be that Dante or Virgil had another child that was hidden? Ziotica suggested. Maybe, I do wish to speak with the young lad. Venelana replied, but luckily Graphia was there and gave her own two cents. And you are in luck my lady, Issei Haidu are now named Issei Sparta Haidu wishes to speak with you after this fight is over. Graphia revealed making Venelana's eyes widen and smiled brightly. That is splendid to hear dear. I can't wait to meet this young lad and maybe propose a marriage contract between him and Rias. Venelana said out loud while giggling making both Serzichas and Graphia cringe at the thought because frankly Issei would have killed Rias before anything could happen. And? Both Venelana and Ziodicus are not aware of Rias' actions. Not even the lie that Rias told Graphia back a couple of chapter ago. Yes let's wait until the battle is over. Serzicha suggested making both his and Rias' parents nod and continue to watch the battle or more man-sided slaughter. Arena, Riser was looking at what he could describe a true devil. Issei's form changed into a demonic creatures with massive horns, wings and tail, coming from his lower back. The form scared Riser so much that he hasn't realized that he already had way his pants. The devil in front of him was staring him down and watched the fried chicken cower in fear. What is the matter Phoenix, you wanted to meet the devil. Then come and get it Issei stated and dashed at Riser, who was too slow to react and was met with a fist straight to his face, but Issei wasn't done. But some could describe this as a true torture session that could even make the original Devil Kings cower in fear. Issei did everything what he could think of to make Riser feel hell itself. Slashing him endlessly and let him regenerate to only do it again for a full minute, stabbing him with swords created out of demonic energy. He used the power of destruction to destroy his organs from the inside to make him feel an immeasurable amount of pain. While still hiding the fact that he possesses the power of destruction. Crucify him and torture him further with his black lighting while still not killing him. And lastly for good measure beating his face relentlessly into a pulp while doing it in front of the whole underworld for everyone to see. The whole beatdown took 10 minutes, and the audience was now in total fear, seeing the last descendant of Sparta torturing the third son of the Phoenix family. Ravel tried to go to his older brother, but was stopped by Claire, who said that Riser must concede to end the battle if not, no one is allowed to intervene. Issei who was still in his true devil form, looked at the still crucified Riser Phoenix and saw that he looked dead inside. His eyes held no emotion. Issei inwardly grinned, he maybe has developed a very sadistic personality over the two years of training. Issei flew in front of the dead inside Riser and pointed revelation at his neck. Where has all that pride gone to Riser? Weren't you planning to show me a lesson? Issei asks in his demonic voice making Riser look at the eyes of the devil and muttered a couple of words. Fill me Riser requested making the audience's eye widen and Issei inwardly grinned. Very well then, say hello to your ancestors in hell for me. Issei said and raised revelations in the air, and an immense amount of demonic power started to gather around his sword. The amount of demonic power started to become so immense that it would definitely be able to destroy Riser Phoenix out of existence. Time to die, when Issei was about to land the finishing blow his vision was blinded by a green light and was hit by a powerful blast of energy, sending him far away and breaking the attack Issei was about to deliver. Issei was sent flying but quickly recovered and looked at his attacker and saw none other than Claire Phoenix in a red battle suit that Barley held her massive breast. She also had a red cannon in her hands and looked to be the one who has fired that blast at him. Issei Sparta Haidu, Riser Phoenix has already conceded defeat, please lower your weapon at once, you already have won the battle, Claire yelled out making Issei quiet for a second. His thoughts were not about to let Riser go, but about Clara more specifically her weapon. It felt so similar. But Issei will keep that thought in mind for later. Issei sighed and landed on one of the floating rocks of the long destroyed battle arena and deactivated his true devil form. He looked over to Claire and gave a grin. Very well then. If a pretty lady like admit defeat for him. Then I don't have any problems. Issei said making Claire surprised at the response and look away with a blush on her face. The very well riser Phoenix is unable to battle any longer, the victor is Issei Sparta Haidu Claire declared loudly. 
Issei chucked and gave Claire a knowing smirk and pointed to his left arm, making Claire's eyes widen, but before she could say anything. Issei was teleported away. So he knows, huh? Claire thought and looked over to her traumatized younger brother and sighed. You idiot. Party room. Issei was teleported to the party room and saw that all the devils were looking at him with mixed expression, but Issei didn't care and started to walk towards the exit, but soon was stopped when a voice called out to him. Issei Sparta. A male voice called out making Issei look at the direction and saw none other than Serzich's Lucifer standing there with a female devil he didn't knew and a young boy with him with crimson hair and brown eyes. Issei ignored the two and looked over to the crimson Satan. The deal is set Rhea's Gremory is free from her marriage contract. Serzich's claimed making Issei nod. Rhea's wanted to go and hug Issei, but a glare stopped her in her tracks. Very well, when is the meeting that I asked for? Issei asked the Devil King. In an hour actually. I will send Grafia to pick you up. You enjoy the party for now. Serzich's said and walked away making Issei roll his eyes. The people at the party all looked at him with fear and none was bold enough to approach him. Issei took a slice of pizza and watched the sky of the underworld. It looked very similar of that of the human world. Issei's thoughts were interrupted when a voice called out to him. Issei? Issei looked behind him and none other than Sona Citri with Tsubaki behind her. Hello Sona, a pleasure to see you again. You two Tsubaki Issei greeted the Citri heiress and her queen. Sona walked over and stood next to Issei and looked as well at the moon. Thanks for everything. Sona thanked making Issei chuckle. It is nothing. Riser wasn't even a challenge. Issei said casually like he didn't just tortured Riser in front of the whole underworld. Did you have to torture him? Sona asked making Issei shrug his shoulders. Maybe, maybe not. I just did it to have some enjoyment. Issei answered making the Citri heiress roll her eyes. So what now? Sona asked making Issei grin. The next step is gonna approach soon. I need you to be present with a meeting I will have soon. Issei said making Sona look at him curiously. May I ask why? Sona asks making Issei shake his head. You will find out when the meeting happens. Issei answered making Sona suspicious. Can my peerage come? Sona asks again making Issei think. It is best that only your queen come. Issei answered making Sona nod and adjust her glasses. Hello Sona-chan. A new female voice said making both Issei and Sona look at the direction and saw two girls approaching. One was a beautiful blonde with red eyes and glasses. She had a serious expression on her face while wearing formal attire. Next was none other than Laisha Astareth who was as elegant as ever. Hello Sekvera and you too Laisha. A pleasure to see you two again. Sona greeted politely. A pleasure indeed. Laisha said and looked over at Issei. You must be the famous Issei Sparta. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Laisha greeted politely making Issei nod. The pleasure is all mine. May I ask why two beautiful ladies such as yourself have decided to visit me? Issei asks the girls who blushed at the comment. Just wanted to introduce herself before the party is over. Laisha answered making Issei nod. It is very surprising to hear that a descendant of Sparta is still alive. The whole underworld is going to be upside down soon. Sekvera commented making Issei shrug. Maybe but it isn't any of my business. Issei said making both girls look at him confused. Well I have no wish to ruin your peace. But without a doubt a lot of devil clans are planning to get their hands on you. So I suggest making political allies to back you up. Laisha suggested making Issei think. He agreed with the girl's logic. You make a point. Issei said making Sona eyes widen. This is my chance. Sona was about to open her mouth, but another voice spoke before she could. Issei Sama, the meeting is prepared. The voice of none other than Grafia said making Issei look at the silver-haired devil and nod. It appears that I need to leave now. My apologies to cut things short. Issei said and started to walk towards the direction of Grafia. Um Issei do you mind if we visit you in the future? Laisha asked suddenly making Issei look at her and smirk. Of course I don't. Just let me know beforehand. See you later. Issei said and waved goodbye and walked away with Grafia. I should leave as well. I will see you too in the near future. Sona said and walked away with Tsubaki behind her, leaving the two long-haired female devils behind. So you're interested in him huh? Sekvera asked Laisha with a smirk. Of course I am interested. You're not. Laisha asks making Sekvera shrug her shoulders. Maybe see you later cousin. Sekvera said at her cousin and walked away. Yes see ya. Laisha responded back to her cousin. Chapter 24. Phoenix Arc. Finale. Gremory Household. Issei and Grafia were teleported in front of the massive mansion of the Gremory Household. Issei was inwardly impressed at massive mansion, but he would hate to live in such a big mansion. Grafia opened the doors of the castle and turned to Issei. Lord and Lady Gremory are waiting in the main dining hall. We can discuss the matter you wish to address them after dinner. Lord Zekram Bale and the Satans. Lucifer, Leviathan and Beelzebub are here as well. Grafia informed Issei making him nod. 
He couldn't care less about dinner or anything those stupid politics wish to talk about. He just want to reveal what Riaz has done and cut contact with her and her peerage completely. Fine by me, but don't accept proper etiquette from me. Issei said and walked inside the massive mansion. Inside the mansion was an immense amount of maids and butlers bowing down for them. Gosh Issei hated this, what is the point of having such a big house? Just to show off. Issei followed Grafia towards the main dining hall, but were stopped when a female voice called out to him. Hello there Grafia. A woman said out loud making both Issei and Grafia look at the direction of the voice and saw a very well-looking woman with long black curly black hair and dark blue eyes. She was wearing a revealing dress that hugged her body tightly. She had an aura of elegance around her. And imagine Yatsuba Maya from the irregular of Magic High School. Hello Maya. Grafia greeted the wife of Serzichas while keeping her stoic face. Issei could sense of rivalry between them making him wonder what is going on. Good to see you again Grafia dear. Ah you must be Issei Sparta correct? Maya turned her attention to Issei who looked at her with a bored expression. Yeah, something wrong with it? Issei asks the wife of Lucifer with a narrowing stare. Maya didn't look threatened at all, but did gain a small blush from the intense stare from the dragon demon. No not at all. I am just honored to meet you in person so soon after you revealed yourself. Maya quickly replied making Issei shrug his shoulders. I came here because I have something to say to the Gremory family. Nothing more, you won't probably see me again after all of this. Issei stated truthfully making Maya a bit confused, but before she could say something. Grafia beat her to the punch. Issei Sama the others are waiting for you. Lady Maya you should join them quickly. Grafia informed making Issei nod and Maya smile sweetly. Yes, you are right. Come on Issei let's go to the dining hall. Maya said happily and grabbed Issei's arm and placed them near her breast and dragged Issei to the dining room. Issei let the wife of Lucifer drag him to the dining room, he didn't mind it because her breasts were as soft as pillows and he was a pervert after all. When they made it, Maya let go of his arm and made sure that he looked presentable. Grafia walked towards the door and opened it revealing a well-built dining room with a large amount of maids and butlers. Issei saw several people already on the table with one of them being the red-haired bitch in her peerage. The three Satans were there as well, the head of the Gremory clan with his wife and an old man with black hair and violet eyes was also sitting by them. Issei assumes that person must be Zekram Bale. The oldest devil currently alive. Ah if it is not Issei Sparta, a pleasure to meet you in person. My name is Ziodicus Gremory, the head of the Gremory clan. A tall man with crimson reaching his shoulders said. He had the same blue greenish eyes as Serzich's and wore a formal white suit. Ziodicus stood up from his seat and walked over to Issei and raised him hand. Yeah, a pleasure. Issei said with no emotion laced within his voice and shook his hand. Next was a woman who had a face almost identical to Rhea's, but she seemed more matured. She had dark brown hair and deep violet eyes. She also wore a dress that revealed what Issei could describe the biggest pair of breasts he has ever seen. It is a pleasure to meet you dear, I am Venelana Gremory, the wife of Ziodicus and the mother of Serzich's and Rhea's. The now named Venelana introduced herself. Yeah, nice to meet you. Issei said casually. Issei knew already the three Satans, so there wasn't need for introductions. But his attention went to the oldest devil in the room. Hello there Issei Sparta, I am Zekram Bale, the first great king of the Bale clan. Zekram introduced himself making Issei nod and both shook hands. A pleasure to meet you old man. Issei said rudely making the other devil shocked at the rude remark of Issei, but to everyone's surprise Zekram started launching. Aha you really are Dante's son. You have his attitude that is for certain. Zekram said while laughing making Issei grin. Grandson actually. Issei corrected. Now I see my apologies. It has been a long time I have seen the demon hunter or his older twin brother. Zekram apologized making Issei shrug. Yeah no problems old man, shall we eat because I am starving? Issei said making Zekram nod. Inner came along, and Issei had to admit that the food was bucking amazing Zekram also brought some pies that were made with the famous fruit of the Bale clan. Which Issei again had to admit was the most delicious pie he has ever eaten. Sona and Tsubaki also came along not too long after, and both Issei and Sona made some small talk. Not to his surprise, Riaz and Akeno are completely silent unless when someone asked them a question. They knew that the time was drawing near, and Issei wanted to savor this moment. When dinner was finally done all of them were now relaxing in the main lounge. Issei was sitting next to Sona who was being hugged by Sir Afal. Much so Sona's embarrassment. The rest was sitting on the well-designed couches with some having a drink in their hand. Issei also had a wine fine to enjoy. Which Issei was not too shabby about. Issei also knew that he can't get drunk because of the dragon's natural immune system to any form of poison. The only exception being the poison of Samuel. Now Issei, may I ask why you wishes to speak with us and not back in the Phoenix territory? Ziodicus asked making Issei shrug. I wanted to talk about some very serious issues. Issei answered vaguely while downing his glass. 
The older devils looked to Desai with a confused expression with Venelana already being half drunk. May I ask what serious issues you wish to talk about? Zeodicus asks making a say smirk. Now nothing too serious, just that your daughter has used her authority of her town to get me killed by a fallen angel, which was sent to kill me to get out of her marriage contract with a fried chicken. Not to mention that she used her servants to keep watch of me to make sure that her plan is going well. Asay said casually while smirking at the gobsmacked expressions on the older devil's faces. Riaz and Akeno were looking at the ground with shame. While well, everyone else except Sona was looking at Asay with wide eyes and mouth open. W what? Zeodica stuttered hoping what he heard happened from the alcohol. Do I need to repeat myself? Issei asks making the head of the Gremory household shake his head. No 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 it is just what you just said can't be possibly true. Zeodicus exclaimed making Issei roll his eyes. Why don't you ask your daughter right now? Issei said and pointed at Rias who was sitting on the couch while looking at her shoes. The other devils also turned their attention towards the sister of Lucifer. Rias, please don't tell me that what he said is true. Zeodicus pleaded hoping that it is all a bad dream. I it isn't he true Rias lied while stuttering. But someone else wasn't having it and it wasn't to say this time. Zop a bolt of lightning was fired at Rhea's direction and hit to the floor very close to her shoes. Everyone looked at the direction of the person who fired the attack and saw none other than Venelana, now standing with her aura around her, while having a deadly serious expression on her face. Tell the truth Rhea's. Venelana ordered in a calm voice, but everyone could hear that she was close to exploding. I, I told you he is Rhea's was already stopped with her lie when another voice cut her off. She has done it Lady Gremory. Sona suddenly said making all look at her. Rias had a face of betrayal, but Sona didn't care. Tsubaki looked shocked at her master. Hair to explain Sona. Seraphal said to her younger sister in her serious voice. Her normal bubbly personality was gone and now was the current devil king Leviathan. Like Issei said Rias has used her authority of Kuo to force him into her peerage when the fallen angel Rainer which she is now part of her peerage was sent to kill him. She told me that she was planning to make Issei into her servant but it wasn't aware of what method. She also said that she would take care of the fallen angels who had infiltrated our territory, so I led everything to her. If I knew about her method of getting a say into her peerage. I would have done something to prevent it or at least inform my sister about it. Sona explained and took a deep breath. There was now total silence in the room. Rhea's looking at the floor with tears rolling down her cheeks. Akeno also looking down with shame because of her actions. Sona and Tsubaki were now glaring at Rhea's. Serzich's had a look of betrayal and disappointment. Seraphal had a look that said that she wishes to freeze Rias completely. Ajuka had a look of disgust. Maya and Grafia were already passed out drunk. Zekram Bale had a face of disappointment. Zeodicus was in total disbelief, and Benelana was now glaring daggers at Rias. Issei was looking at everyone's expression with the biggest shit-eating grin. He officially has ruined Rias impression in front of some of the important people in the underworld, and her reputation is ruined. After five minutes of intense silence Erzichas was first to break the silence. Not also that, she had lied to Seraphal, Grafia and myself of what happened two weeks ago. Serzichas suddenly said making everyone look at him. ex Bain. Venelana said in a monologue voice, but the killing intent was there making the Lucifer flinch, but before he could continue his say beat at him to the punch. Now that she teleported to my house and asked to take my virginity, which turned into me threatening to kill her and use Grafia's bad timing to use to her advantage and lied about me attempting to grape her. Issei revealed making the others again shocked. Then Alana was now almost exploding with rage. She stood up and turned her attention to Zekram who flinched at the glare of Venelana. From this day forward Rias and her peerage are not allowed to ever set a foot in the human world ever again without permission of me, furthermore her part of the territory becomes Sona's completely and lastly Gasper will be traded to Sona Venelana declared loudly to the old devil who was bit scared of the woman and nodded. Venelana took a deep breath and calmed down and looked towards Sona. Of course, if you want Sona. I don't want to force into anything. Venelana said in much calmer tone. Oh of course I don't mind. Sona answered making Venelana nod. Very well then. I think you all should take your leave. Venelana suggested making the other nod. Everyone left the Gremory household with Issei, Sona and Tsubaki going back to the human world. Issei could already imagine the torment Rias is going to face. And he doesn't feel bad about it in the slightest. Then days later, then days has passed when Issei had defeated Riser and revealed the truth about Issei's actions, and now we see Issei sitting in main chair in the occult research club. In the ten days Rias and her peerage were brought back to the underworld, leaving the building for the occult research club unoccupied. Issei requested Sonathay he can have it and use it as his own base of some sorts. Sona agreed and give Issei the keys, and now the occult research club was changed into a workplace which Issei renamed into Devil May Cry. In honor of his grandfather Dante. Sona also got a new servant called Gasper. A cross-dressing vampire who had a sacred gear that can stop time. 
Song requested to help him train his sacred gear with he accepted because it was his fault that Gaspar was suddenly transferred to Sona. Son also revealed that she and Issei were engaged much to his shock, but agreed to keep it within himself. But Issei started to have some not-so-professional relationships with Sona and her female peerage members, with Saji not knowing that Issei was banging his crush on his desk. Rhea's also lost her ride as heiress to the Gremory clan. It was giving to the son of Serzich's and Maya. Milika's Gremory but Issei didn't care. About the Gremory peerage. Rhea's lost her status as a noble and became a maid in the household of Gremory, the same thing happened to her peerage. All in all Issei had his revenge and was now enjoying a pizza in his own workplace. His attention shifted towards the phone on his desk and picked it up. Evil may cry. Nice I got through to you, I have a job for you. And male voice said. Okay, may I have your name? Issei asks the man on the other side of the call. Nice to hear of you, the name is Azazel. Chapter 25. Warmonger Arc. Part 1. Location. Issei and Erika were walking through the empty streets of Kuo towards the house of the client that called Issei yesterday. Lucina was home enjoying herself with Ariana. Do you think that it is a wise idea to go the house of the Governor General of the Fallen Angels? Erica asked a bit worried. It will be fine. Issei said casually. But what it is a trap. Erica suggested making Issei sigh. Trust me babe, it won't. Azazel told me some interesting news yesterday. And Drake told me that Azazel is a chill type of a guy. So he won't try anything. Issei said making Erica not in acceptance, but she was a bit worried. What did you talk about yesterday? Erica asks making Issei sigh and start explaining what happened. Yesterday, devil may cry. So what does the leader of the fallen angels want with me? Issei asks over the phone. He was surprised that the governor general of the fallen angels was contacting him of all people. Like I said, I have a job that is highly important. Azazel said over the phone. How important are we talking about? Issei asks while finishing his pizza slice. Let just say, if nothing happens then the great war between the three biblical factions are about to continue. Azazel answered making a say raise an eyebrow. That means whoever is responsible for this must be someone very powerful right? Issei asks making Azazel chuckle. Indeed, his name is Kakabiel the leader class fallen angel. He wishes to resurrect the great war. Azazel explained making Issei nod in understanding, but Drake decided to place his own two cents into this. Kakabiel huh? That warmonger is always trying to start conflict and chaos. Best you take this job partner. Drake said making Issei nod. I see, I can't really ignore such a job. So are we gonna discuss details? Or Issei asks, but the fallen angel leader cut him off. Just meet me in Plutibay 69, just knock on the door, and I will let you in. Azazel said and cut of the phone making Issei sigh. This should be interesting. I see, so that is why you accepted this job. Erica said in understanding. Yup, so now we are gonna meet and discuss about some matters that could help us in this case. Issei revealed making Erica nod and followed Issei. Eventually they arrived at a decent-sized apartment with a number plate 69 on it. Issei stepped in front of the door and knocked several times. After a couple of seconds the door was opened by a man in his 30s with mostly black hair and some golden bangs. He wore a typical Heiori and gave Issei a small smirk. Hey there devil boy, you must be Issei. Azazel said making Issei roll his eyes. No I am Adolf Hitler, who else did you expect to come? Issei sarcastically asked making Azazel chuckle. Okay okay, come in. I have some sake that we can enjoy. Azazel said and moved to the side to let Issei and Erika. Small place you have here I thought you at least would have a seven-story mansion for being the governor general of the fallen angels. Issei said casually making Azazel shrug his shoulders. It is easier this way. Not to mention Serzich's and Serafel don't know that I am here. Azazel revealed while taking some extra shot glasses. Issei simply nodded and sat on the couch along with Erika who was also on guard. Understandable, but may I ask why you can't deal with Kakabiel? He is part of your faction after all. Issei asks making Azazel sigh and handed over the glasses and alcohol to Issei who filled one glass and jugged it down. Erika refused the offer and just requested some water. The Kabiel is one of the strongest of the Grigori. To take deal with him will take an immense amount of force. Which only the other leaders can do. But the problem is that he is setting all of this up in Kuo. So if some leaders are coming here fighting. The devils could take it the wrong way and see that it was a sign for battle or something like that. Azazel explained making a say nod in understanding. Okay, but that will only include the devils. What about the angels? Erica asks making Azazel sigh again. Just recently I got news from Michael that some fallen angels were responsible for theft on some holy swords. They also confirmed that the fallen angels that took the holy swords are now located in Kuo. Azazel further explained making a say and Erica both nod. I see. What type of holy sword are we talking about? It must be important if it could draw out the attention of heaven. Issei asks making Azazel shrug. 
that is Excalibur. Azazel answered making both Issei and Erika shocked. Excalibur, like the Excalibur of King Arthur? Issei asks making Azazel nod. Yup, but only three of the seven swords. Azazel revealed making Issei confused. Three out of seven? Issei asks, but Erika decided to answer him. The original Excalibur was split into seven different swords, with each having their own ability. The original Excalibur had seven unique abilities, that is why the was split into seven. Erika explained making Issei nod. I see. Issei said, but suddenly an image of a blonde-haired knight with hazel-colored eyes came into his head. So can we assume that the church is gonna send some exorcists over here? Erika asks bringing Issei back to the conversation. The fallen angel's leader simply nodded. Up to in fact. Azazel said making Erika nod. Not to mention I received information just now that a crazy priest is running around with one of those Excaliburs. Azazel informed making Issei raise an eyebrow. Crazy priest. Issei asks making Azazel shrug his shoulders. I just received information about it yesterday. So I can't tell much more. Azazel answered making Issei nod. Very well then. I think that it is for Issei stopped talking when he felt his left hand twitch. Azazel have you already find information about Coca Beale? A female voice asks from the other side of the room which she came in from. She had long white hair with a hint of silver and crystal blue eyes. Her eyes narrowed and looked towards Issei's who was also staring at her. Valerie why did you stop? Another female voice asks calmly. She had long raven black hair and blood red eyes. She wore a black uniform and skirt and had a katana that gave a weird aura with her. Hey Val can you give me a sign before you teleport in my house? Azazel said casually, but he started to sense the odd feeling in the air and saw Issei and the now named Vali staring in each other in the eyes. Issei's crimson red was staring deeply into Valerie's azure blue. No words were shared making the other people in the room very confused at what is happening, but suddenly two deep dragonic voices spoke out loud for each other to hear. It appears we meet again white one. Yes it appears so red one. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.